The Ukrainian government says recapturing the city of Kherson means victory in the war against Russia is only a matter of time. Ukraine regained control of the southern city after officials in Moscow said some 30,000 Russian troops were pulled out of the region on Friday. Sources close to the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky have warned, though, that the Kremlin's forces are making new fortifications on the left bank side of the Dnipro River. Fears have also been expressed after satellite images showed significant new damage to a dam close by. Our correspondent Catherine Bayrohanga sent us this report from the capital, Kyiv. Jubilation and tears of happiness in Kherson as Ukrainian special forces enter the city. People here have lived under Russian occupation for more than eight months, but the fight is far from over. Retreating Russian forces still pose a big threat from across the Dnipro River. Uh, we have been warned yesterday by our general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces that Russians are making new fortifications on the left bank side of the uh, Dnieper River. And uh, there is a likelihood of massive artillery shelling from that side uh, onto Kherson. Uh, at the moment, we are quietly optimistic. But of course, we understand that uh, there are future battles which we will have to win. The damage caused as the Russians withdrew is becoming clearer. They blew up the Antonivsky Bridge, the key route over the Dnipro River. And now, new satellite images show damage to the crucial Kharkovka Dam north of Kherson. If it collapses, it could flood over 80 settlements, including Kherson. The government has warned residents not to return to the city just yet because of landmines and unexploded munitions in the area. On the global stage, Ukraine is savouring its victory in Kherson, but it warns it needs continued international support as it heads into a difficult winter with an increased threat of retaliatory attacks. Violation of borders, use of force, committing mass atrocities against civilian population. If anyone in the world sees that Russia can get away easily with all of this, then this someone will be tempted to follow the suit. Winning back Kherson has boosted national morale, but a complete victory over Russia remains elusive. Well, Catherine joins us now from Keith. Catherine, what are you hearing about conditions inside the city now? Yes, when Kherson was under Russian occupation, it was pretty much cut off from the rest of Ukraine. So now there's a process of reintegrating it back into Ukraine. And that means bringing back basic services. Even the phone and internet lines had been cut off. So those are going to be reinstated. And also you have to bring back people like policemen, doctors, nurses. So that process is underway. But remember, whilst Kherson was under Russian occupation, it was shielded from the massive bombardment and missile strikes that much of Ukraine has been experiencing. And now with the Russians on the eastern side, there's a prospect that the people in Kherson will have to shelter and be protected from airstrikes. We feel free, say the people of Kherson, the Ukrainian city liberated from Russian occupation in the last 24 hours. Residents have been celebrating in the streets as Russian troops withdrew from the only regional capital they held. President Zelensky hailed it as an historic day, praising his people's resilience. And the UK Defence Secretary said the Russian retreat was another strategic failure for Moscow. But this is still a war that is far from over, as our global security editor Rohit Katru reports from her song. When we arrived in her song this morning, it felt like life had suddenly been pulled back into the streets. <laughs> on every face we saw it, and on every flag. The colours, the emotions, which were erased nine months ago and were unwrapped when occupation ended. This is my home. Her son is my home, she says. <laughs> then she adds, her son is Ukraine. 
and everyone we spoke to said that however dark the days became, a sense of optimism was never totally lost. Did you think the Russians would be here forever? No, 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 no. The heroes of this jubilee are the soldiers turned celebrities. <laughs> who signed autographs and shared selfies and were cheered wherever they went in Central Square. This city, this square, this very spot became the ultimate symbol of Russian success and now it's an ultimate symbol of Russian failure. Just look around. Ukrainian flags everywhere on every single building. People cheering. As Helena begins to tell me how this moment feels, she breaks into song. She's joined by a stranger. Hey! 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 And finally, by many others. This is the national anthem, the song they dared not sing under occupation. But there's another story here, not so far from the square. Sergei peels off from the crowd to show me where he spent some of the occupation. He and his friend Mikolai were Ukrainian soldiers and were arrested by Russian police. In their basement cell, both prisoners shared a routine of cold showers in the dark. But Sergei was tortured with electrodes, singled out. His fingers are still numb. When her son was seized, Russia called this city the first of many. That is now a title its people want to embrace. Because tonight, they and the soldiers that guard it feel they have rewritten the story. And they ask this, her son now, but where next? Rohit Katru, ITV News, in Liberated Her Song. Now, the renowned graffiti artist Banksy has unveiled this, his latest work, on a destroyed building in a Ukrainian city. Banksy posted a picture of the artwork, a gymnast doing a handstand on Instagram. The city was one of the places hardest hit by Russian bombardment in the immediate aftermath of the invasion.